Lincoln, hello. You want to say hi, Lincoln? No. Lincoln, come say hi. Lincoln, come here. Lincoln, okay. Duty. Lincoln, one more second. Come here. Lincoln. Come here. Real quick. Here. Hi. Can't see him because of the bay. <laughs> you see him or not? I don't know. He's mysterious. Hard to get on camera, I'll tell you that. The only time you can take pictures of him is when he's sleeping. And that's it. And he's out of here like a flash. Can you guys hear me? I'll start with that. What? You guys can hear me? They said yes. Uh, Is there anyone watching? That's a better question. <laughs> yeah, we got 30 people. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm just opening up the chat right now. Okay. Well, I'm going to start out with a review today of something that I picked up uh, about, I don't know, a little over a month ago. And it's finally now for sale. Somehow I got my hands on it early. You know, I just always watch the sites. I'm always just checking for new stuff to see what's out there. And once in a while it happens where I get something accidentally. Or too early before it's been released. And today that is the Paula's Choice Probiotic Nutrient Moisturizer. I picked it up just before March. Actually, I think it was when Dermster had their sale? No, I don't think, I think it was before that. But anyway. So I picked that up, got it here. I used it for a few days. And then I wanted to look up the ingredients online because the ingredients on the bottle are super tiny. And I couldn't find it anywhere online. And a few people asked me where I got it from. And then I realized it was probably released a little too early. So I've had a good chance to try it now. So I thought I would do a review because many of you asked about it. And then I'm going to talk about a few new skincare products and a little bit of news. And uh, that should be good. I can see it now, yes. Yeah, Paula's Choice products are getting pricey. They're out of control. Seriously. They add in the amount of new products released. So I got ready today in less than 10 minutes. Curled my hair and did makeup. You can probably tell a little bit that I spent 10 minutes on it, but uh, the last couple days, I think I had an allergic reaction. There's something I ate, or it was the new Drunk Elephant products. Which, since I've never had a problem with Drunk Elephant, I didn't patch test. Which is always a reminder, no matter what, to patch test. So, my whole neck was just, like, red. I was itching it for, like, three days straight. Just uncontrollably. And I normally, I'd, like, go to the store and get, like, calamine or something. I'm not going into the store because I'd rather be itchy than get the thing. But, uh, so I was applying... Cordaid, I was applying uh, propolis, I was applying, uh, what else was I applying? Just several random things, skin calming serums, anything, anything I could try. And finally, I will say the one thing that really helped was the Lord Jones CBD cream. Out of everything, that's the one that helped the most. And whatever it is, it's finally going away. But I kind of think it might have been the Drunk Elephant skincare products, or the new body and hair care products. I'm kind of too afraid to ever try them again now, which was my, like, birthday present since everything was closed. My birthday, normally, like, go out to eat, maybe do something. So I saved a lot of money there, so that was my present. So now I'm debating if I should just return it or just pass it down or what. I'll probably pass it down to somebody. I scanned the ingredient list, and I'm pretty certain which ingredients I know I'm allergic to, which is a lot of just the fragrance stuff. There's one um, pigment... Um, that they use in, like, eye, sh eye shadow primers. But other than that, I don't know. I couldn't figure it out, so. Anyway, so I'm here. It doesn't look so bad, but I should have taken a picture of it yesterday. It was like a lobster. It was out of control. It was horrible. I didn't sleep at all. So anyway, so today I took a Benadryl to help with it, and then I fell asleep. I woke up at, like, 5 a.m., and then I finally fell asleep again, like, about an hour ago. And then I woke up, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get ready. We've got 10 minutes. Hurry up. Get ready. So, anyway, here I am. It might look a little 
scrambled, but anyway. So, I think I'm going to start with the review quick. Oh, Kim says return it. Yeah, I think I might have to. I just, yeah, anyway. Ah, oh, Brittany's wondering if this will be comparable to the Drunk Elephant F-Balm. That's a good, uh, the textures are very similar, so. Anyway, what? You should do a person. I should do. A, I've got some good verses ideas, so I'm going to work on those soon. So let me just start out. Did it just start? Yep, we're just starting. I talked about my woes and getting ready in 10 minutes. And I finished, I don't know if any of you guys watched The Tiger King. I don't know. I, I, I watched so many reality shows, and they're all, like, finishing. And then I start watching, like, the ID network. And that's just kind of a downer after several hours. It's just sad. It never ends good. Somebody always dies. So then I watched The Tiger King and that kind of brought my spirits up a little bit. And then back down. And then back up and then back down. It's kind of... Anyway, so... The mic was me. Oh, the mic was I you. Was okay. Changing the volume. Way to go, cameraman. Okay, so Paula's Choice calls this a... Mil and I'm going to talk about microbiomes as well and explain. A lot of you probably know, but I'll talk a little bit more about that here. Uh, so they call this a moisturizer made with pre, pro, and postbiotics that help maintain skin's good bacteria for a stable microbiome. In a healthier, more balanced complexion, stabilizes and strengthens skin's microbiome, progressively fortifies against signs of aging, maintains healthy bacteria for smooth skin, uh, smooth gel cream texture, even suitable for breakout prone skin. So what is the skin's microbiome? So this, your stomach has a microbiome, which is why people will take like probiotics or eat yogurt. So they both have a uh, microbiome, your face, your skin, and your stomach. Um, the skin's microbiome, new research shows us that these microbiomes play an important role in skin health. Uh, the stomach and skin play a balancing act between beneficial, neutral, and harmful flora. The microbiome works to protect the skin and keep the skin's barrier functioning, like a healthy skin barrier. The microbiome is an invisible ecosystem that lives on the skin that's working to keep it healthy and in good condition. By protecting your skin from unfriendly organisms and helping manage your skin's pH, your microbiome makes important contributions to your skin's barrier. It also produces skin nutrients and essential skin lipids. Science has shown differences between the microbiome and dry or normal skin. So that's interesting. Dry skin has a little bit different microbiome, which probably means it has different needs. Um, let's see. So where was, where was I at? Okay, basically your skin microbiome plays an important contribution to the things that make your skin feel and look healthier. A balanced, diverse microbiome supports many of the processes that the skin needs to stay healthy and resilient when the microbiome is disturbed, you might you may not see a noticeable difference, but the microbiome may function significantly imbalanced microbiome. Oh, your microbiome may function less effectively, offering less support to the skin. And studies have shown a link between significantly imbalanced microbiome and a variety of conditions, such as atopic dermatitis and eczema. So there are three things that can help balance a microbiome. They are prebiotics a non-digestible food ingredient that promotes the growth of microorganisms. Uh, okay, they can, these can promote the growth of beneficial or harmful microbiomes. Think of them as a type of fertilizer for the microbiome. Probiotics. So you see some products only contain one or the other. A lot of them really only contain uh, probiotics. Prebiotics I don't see and typically a lot of uh, microbiome products. So... Uh, so probiotics, living microorganisms, or <laughs> microorganisms that can produce beneficial qualities when used orally or topically. What probiotics are not? Microbiomes naturally found in your body and on your skin. Microbes. Microbes are no longer alive. Fermented foods that contain an unknown amount of bacteria. And then postbiotics are byproducts which help reinforce the skin's natural defense. The Inculus has a great one. Um, what if, it's the their multibiotic serum, which I tried to find to bring down, but I was like, my camera was yelling, it's time, so I didn't find it, but it's a good one. So if you're looking for something more affordable, that one's less than $20. And I think about the same size. So that one's certainly worth checking out as well. 
and it contains both pre and probiotics. Um, so I think sometimes like cleansing your skin too harshly can really damage your um, microbiome. Sometimes improperly products used that are improperly pH that can affect it. There's probably a numerous amount of things, just ingredients that are too harsh can probably affect it. So something worth thinking about. Okay, so packaging. I like the packaging, no issues at all with that. It's very easy, functional, protects the ingredients from exposure to light and air. So that's very nice. There's no denatured or drying types of alcohol in this. It does contain uh, acetyl alcohol, which is a good alcohol. It's fatty. It helps your skin hydrate. Fragrance, Paula's Choice, thankfully, is still one of those products today where you know they don't use fragrance. So that's always a nice thing when you buy from Paula's Choice. You can typically rely on it not having fragrance. So hopefully that continues. I don't know. When they're releasing like four new products a month, gets me a little nervous as to what's really going on there. You have to wonder how many people are working there, who's really creating the product since Paula from Paula's Choice sold the company, although she's still somewhat involved. I'm not exactly sure. They must pay her a retainer or something to still consult. So anyway, thankfully, they are still fragrance-free. The manufacturing for this is the U.S., so no issues with that. Ease of use, so once or twice daily, you can apply it to face and neck. And uh, if you use it in the daytime, use a sunscreen afterwards. It's really quite moisturizing. I can see how it probably would be good for both oily or dry skin types because it kind of sets to a nice matte finish. For the most part, it layers well over pretty much anything. However, if you have thicker moisturizers that sometimes you like to use over it or some sunscreens when you apply them over it, once in a while, I've noticed pilling happen. Uh, it tends to be when I layer like a thick sunscreen over it or like a really thick moisturizer. So because of that, I tend to use this more so just in my evening routine because I'm trying all these new sunscreens out. And although I'm not going to anywhere, I still want to have it pill all over my face and look annoying to myself. Not that anyone else will care. Um, so just keep that one in mind. It is a little tricky with... Uh, layering things over so for me my evening routine works just great no issues with that okay in terms of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients uh, so we've got lactobacillus ferment which is a probiotic ingredient which helps hydrate the skin condition the skin and also help the skin's microbiome which also has a calming effect on skin then we've got lactobacillus ferment the first one is flour lactobacillus flour ferment. This one is just lactobacillus ferment, which is another probiotic ingredient that strengthens the skin's natural defense against sensitivity, provides instant relief, and over time helps reduce redness, which is what I could use right about now. Although I did apply the Paul's Choice Calm Serum, and it really seemed to help. Okay, so then we've got Bifida ferment lysate, which is a probiotic that helps heal the skin, helps with the microbiome, also has been credited with helping prevent UV damage and can also repair DNA damage. And you see that in a lot of products nowadays, especially like K-Beauty. They use those in almost everything, so that's always nice to see. Then we've got glucomannan, which is a prebiotic that is derived from the konjac root. It's also a supplement people will take which is interesting. When I Googled it at first, all these supplements came out. Uh, so it's a prebiotic that helps balance the skin's natural microbiome and provide hydration. It can also help balance the amount of bacteria on the skin, which in turn helps prevent acne and breakouts. It is also a good antioxidant. Then we've got Saccharomyces lysate, which is a probiotic which helps improve absorption, add beneficial nutrients, Decrease irritation and optimize cellular oxygen consumption. And then a couple more, uh, radish root ferment, which is a preservative used from radish roots, which you see in a lot of stuff as well. Uh, then we've got soybean extract, green tea extract, uh, a vitamin C form. There's a couple peptides, a ceramide, babassu oil, amino acids, raspberry fruit extract, niacinamide, and vitamin E. So a nice long list of really good ingredients. 
A lot of them, like I said, are found in a lot of K-Beauty products and essences. They use a lot of those ferments, which is really great for skin. So if you don't use an essence in your teen, I really recommend checking one out and adding it because I was always, the first time I ever tried an essence, it felt like just pure water, which is what the texture is. And it's like, I didn't see anything instant, but the longer you use it, you can tell your skin feels more hydrated and just healthier. So certainly adding that in is a good thing. Um, and I'm sure some of you guys will have some recommendations if anyone's looking for one. There's so many good ones out there. Um, and you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on it. Like SK2, you don't need to spend several hundred dollars on it. There's good ones that are $20. The uh, Sinic one is great. Okay, on my seventh criteria, which is animal testing, Paula's Choice is cruelty-free, so that's always good. Performance. So for me, it feels nicely hydrating without being too thick or too greasy. Uh, it soaks in pretty nicely, leaves a nice matte finish. Uh, probably be a formula, in my opinion, that would work well for dry or oily type skin. Um, although if you have super dry skin, apply a good serum beforehand. That will help hydrate because this won't be enough. Um, and then uh, does contain some acneogenic ingredients. Not a whole lot, but a few. Uh, butylene glycol, acetyl alcohol, babassu seed oil, and then vitamin E. So nothing of super concern, although that babassu seed oil sometimes can be an issue for certain people too. Then we get to the price, and this is where it gets kind of depressing. So this is the full size, which is 1.7 ounces, and it retails for $42, which is getting up there. All those products are really getting up there. And I have a feeling with the thing that's going on right now, I have a feeling this is going to end up resulting in the long term. And a lot of these products are going to end up coming down with their prices. That's my feeling on it. I know some people feel the exact opposite. I just have a feeling a lot of people are hurting right now. And a lot of people that aren't hurting right now might be hurting in a month or two. So I just think in the long run, the competition is going to go up. They realize their profit margin on all these products is probably higher than anything else. Any other industry out there, I think skincare and beauty products have, have a high markup. So I really feel like in the long run, prices are going to come down. That's my gut feeling. So I'm going to have to start watching a few things and just check it out. Okay, so that's the bummer with this one. But if price is a huge issue... The Inky List Multibiotic uh, Serum is a great alternative, and it's half the price. So that's certainly one worth checking out. And then in terms of the It Factor, I really like it. It's great. I love the fact that it's got pro and prebiotics in there. Helpful for those looking to help heal their microbiome or those that might have uh, issues with acne and things like that. S in adding something like this to your teen can really help, especially since some of the acne treatments can be really harsh. And sometimes I wonder if in the long run, they might be doing more to hurt than help. Certain products. Uh, well packaged, fragrance free, and alcohol free. A little pricey, but still a good option. So I gave this a 9 out of 10. Had this been like 30 even $35, I could have overseen that. But once it gets up past 40 it gets a little pricey for most people. So thankfully I got on sale when they didn't even know they were releasing it to me. So anyway, that's the excitement of Paula's Choice for now, although I, they've released so many products they're having a hard time keeping up with it, and at this point I'm going to try and stop keeping up with it. So um, anyway, so let me look at look at the uh, comments here. Oh, I want to see where everyone's from. Where's everyone from? So we've got, oh, Detroit. Oh, Minnesota, that's us. Let's see, Paul's Choice. Shiseido Altimune is a serum I'm curious about. I'll have to write that down. I'm trying to remember which one that is. Shiseido is one of those brands that I have a feeling in the long run some of their prices might be coming back down. Although, well, I'm kind of interested in what their main, where their main market is. If it's like South Korea or Japan. Some of those places aren't hurting as much as others. So I guess that that might also be a factor. So yes, and says, didn't this moisturizer just launch? It did. Although for me, somehow I got it six weeks ago. That also happened. It's happened with a few products. This one, 
It happened with the drunk elephant proteiny. Sephora had accidentally made it live for like the span of an hour. And I was up at like 1 a.m. when they were doing something with their website. And I ordered it and I got it like a month early. It happened with the uh, like four, four or five years ago with the big Kat Von D eyeshadow palette that I got early. So it's, if you're up watching, I almost got the uh, Drunk Elephant F-Balm early. But. Did I ever tell you guys about this? So I was at the store. I, You know what? When things were better, like last year when things were coming out around the holidays, sometimes I just, I live close to Sephora's, like probably five of them. So on my shopping trips or errands I'd run, I'd just run in, see if there's anything new, see if there's anything out that's probably not supposed to be out. And I saw the F-Balm was out. This was probably like two weeks before it came out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just scored. Now I got it early and I can do a little some analysis and get it out and tell people if they should buy it or not. Be right when it comes out. And I got to the checkout and when they when they scanned it, like an alarm went off and said, do not sell until whatever the release date was. This shouldn't be out on the shelves. And a manager came out and started yelling at the gal, like, why you shouldn't have put those out? Yada, yada, yada. And I'm just like, well, can I still get it? Can I, st I just want it. Can I get it? Nope, nope, nope. They kind of yelled at the poor gal working there, who wasn't her fault. But I guess in the end, the alarms went off and I didn't get it early. So it all worked out well, <laughs> I guess. But once in a while, when there's not something that's such a big launch, that won't happen. Like, the, there's a Peter Thomas Roth microbiome product that came out, and I got that one. It was out early, too. So sometimes it pays just to do your rounds, which I haven't been doing, and I've been saving a lot of money. So, okay, so that's why I have this one and I'm already reviewing it because I've already had a chance to try it out. So, let's see. Fort Worth, woohoo! Oh, Sweden. Oh, I love Sweden. Vermont. Let's see. I'm hijacking your stream. Oh, no. Take a look. Maybe Should I scroll good. down? No, no. Look, at, look over at the screen. I don't see, I just see me. What? I don't see anything. Oh! Oh! Tiger King. Oh, poor Tiger King. You know, it's all fun and games up until you try and have someone killed. You know? Everything's fun and games until that. Don't ever try and get anyone killed. That's, I guess that's the, uh... That's the, that's the thing! Don't do that! You can do almost anything, but don't do that. <laughs> Oh, we've got Hawaii in the house. Let's see. Tiger King getting the nation through the pandemic. <laughs> you know what? It's fast, and they made the time go by a lot faster. So we need more Tiger Kings out there. Although I'm kind of bummed at first when I'm like, when they're talking about filming a re I don't know if any of you guys watched this yet. Should I not say anything else more? At the beginning, they were talking about filming a reality show, and I was really excited because I love reality shows. That's all. You know what, it's just the worst pastime ever, but it always makes me feel a little bit better watching them. Netherlands. Oh, Netherlands. Woohoo! So then, where are you? I am scrolling down. Oh, Virginia Beach, Southern California. Oh, the Primera Essence. I've got to still try that one. Yeah. Well, did you tell Grant, I don't know if he saw that, that I... Oh, you upload the Shiseido playlist? Yeah, I put together a playlist, but... I wonder why no one reviews Shiseido online as much. You know what? They're not a flashy brand. They don't really... You know what? I just don't think they do a lot for media themselves, probably. They probably don't have to, I guess. Maybe. So, let's see. Prices might go down, but we'll all have less to spend. Yeah. That's kind of the bummer about everything going on. The Netherlands. Florida. Arizona. Let's see. Everyone loves the Tiger King. You know, he's so just uh, unfiltered. There's something nice about that, you know. There's something nice in a way about knowing what everyone's thoughts are and the fact that they don't edit them whatsoever. You know, you know what they think about you, I guess. That poor gal with her arm. Oh, in Europe, it's cold and dry. You know what? It was weird. We had, uh, like, summer for, like, three days. It was, like, 55. And then yesterday was just snow, depressing. Now the sun's back out, so the dogs are happy. Oh, Boulder. Woohoo! I love Boulder. 
Okay, so any routine for body acne and smoothness of the body? You know, Paula's getting back to Paula's choice. They make a BHA body spray, which I think contains either salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, and that one is a good one worth checking out for just your body, especially some people like get it like on their back. Uh, sometimes I think shampoo and conditioner can be a huge issue. So if that's a big issue, I would try and change your shampoo and conditioner. Because once in a while, there was one brand I tried and I couldn't use it because it would just break me out. What brand was it? it Start with an O. Olifica or something. I loved it, but I just could not use it. So sometimes that's worth something worth changing. So smoothness, good exfoliant, uh, like a probably an exfoliant scrub. But I would really try the uh, oh the CeraVe BHA body wash. That's a good one too and uh the paul's choice spray those are the two big things probably do you use a mo moisturizer because that might be kind of a problem too and that might be something worth paul's choice has a moisturizer i think that contains a body moisturizer that contains retinol or it's a bha that one might be worth checking out too yes yep the paul's choice bha moisturizing cream that's a good one kind of whatever you do on your face you can try and use for your body. It just depends on if it's a bigger spot, then you need more product. But then if you can find something that's specific for your body in a large size, that's what I would check out. So, yeah, Paul's Choice, they have some good options. I would check them out for sure because they're all over that. What do you advise for hair that keeps breaking, especially when brushing? You know what I use? Because I have pretty long hair and I highlight it which i might have to do myself this next time which is going to be frightening um i just love it the moroccan oil the oil that comes in the bottle i love it it helps so much it makes a difference you will tell the first time you use it it makes a huge difference that's a one thing i'd really recommend they came out with a new it's like a little blue short chubby bottle for like your split ends and you can apply that to like the last inch of your hair and that helps a lot too so I would check those out. So the Moroccan oil is a little bit pricey, but the bottle lasts like bottle lasts me at least a year. You just like one or two pumps and it'll last you like a year. So it's really not super expensive when you think about it. So let's see. I created wrinkles under my eyes because I was so stupid to put on the Paul's Choice retinol under my eyes. Ugh. That's a tough one because your eye, you know what, you don't necessarily need specific eye products, but your eye, your skin around your eyes is much thinner and much more delicate. So anything with acids in it, you have to be really gentle about. You know what I would probably recommend, and I'm loving this one? Well, there's a couple things. The uh, Cosrx Triple Peptide Snail Eye Cream. That one's really nice and very soothing. Or I would recommend the... Um, Basha triple peptide eye cream it comes in a little yellow jar and that one's super hydrating so that might be worth checking out i'd probably first check out the casa rex i think it's like the peptide snail eye cream it's a newer one and it comes in a tube i love that one that one might be worth something check worth checking out because that one really helps a lot especially if you have dry it'll heal it, it'll just take some time and probably a little bit of pain because it's strong. Strong stuff. Retinol is nothing to mess around with. So hopefully some of those will work. Yeah, just keep definitely keep it moisturized. Don't put anything with fragrance in it. Maybe at night a light like marula oil over everything might help it hydrate a little bit better and heal a little bit faster. So Grant asks, what is your suggestion for enlarged pores? A salicylic acid serum the couple there's a couple i love the paula's choice four percent bha serum that one's a really nice one uh the tula acne clear and correcting gel if you're new to exfoliants i would probably start with the tula it comes well now it comes in a blue bottle but the tula acne tone correcting and clearing gel and i think i reviewed that one too so that one, I'd probably start with, if you're new to any exfoliants, start there. 
if you've used some exfoliants, then the Paula's Choice one is great. That's what I use. I've tried so many different ones, and I'm really, between those two, depending on how my skin feels for the day, those are really the most BHAs I use. I, I, there's a few from other brands I've tried, but nothing has impressed me that much. So those are a couple ones worth trying. Let's see. What happened to all the toilet paper? You know what? I got some people that were upset with me about it, and I just thought, you know what? I'm already controversial enough. I already have YouTube's, like, demonetized, like, tons of my videos. I'm taken away from the controversy. <laughs> you know what, though? There are people, I think, that thought I had, like, 40 packets of toilet paper. So, and it was, it was one package. So, anyway. What product do you use after peel or microneedling? I use the, before I microneedle, I have a specific thing. So I'll use my hydrating serum. I'll apply the ordinary copper peptide serum. Then I'll microneedle. And then immediately after that, I will use either the Isn't Tree EGF Repair Ampule or the Isn't Tree EGF Repair Cream. That's, I think, can be very effective unless you have had skin cancer or have a family history of skin cancer, then I probably wouldn't re recommend anything with epidermal growth factors. But if you don't, and you don't have an issue with being a guinea pig like me, then that's a nice one to use afterwards. Don't use any vitamin C. There's so many things on the internet that say after you microneedle, use a vitamin C serum. I don't recommend it. Any case about that the FDA has had reported about microneedling problems have happened when people use a strong vitamin C serum immediately after it, and sometimes it can just be not good. So anything gentle after that and hydrating and no retinol, no exfoliants, no strong antioxidants are good. Anything calming, things like that are good. Don't recommend a retinol or vitamin C, even though a lot of people do it. I've just read so many issues with it. So that help, hopefully. Anything calming. Let's see. No, oh, I think I missed a few. Am I still using the Niode Copper CAIS Lipid? You know what? I was so bummed. I was so excited when I got it because I or uh, Desium had a big sale. I think it was around Black Friday last year, and I got it on sale. And every time I use it, I end up breaking out. So I just can't use it. And I would know it was specifically that because I would use it on specific areas of my face. You missed one before. That. Oh, I'm so bad. But anyway... So if you if you you have skin that hardly ever breaks out, and you don't have an issue with that, then I think it really is a, something worth trying because it really does feel nicely hydrating. But my skin just didn't tolerate it at all. It was a bummer. But if you don't have issues with that, it might be worth trying. So, okay, what do I think of Eucerin? You know what? I don't think I have reviewed anything from them yet. I'm trying to think. No, I don't even think I've reviewed their lip products. I, You know what? I'm really enjoying them because I found on, I think it was Feel Unique UK, I found a way to get the Eucerin skincare products because they really aren't, they're like face care products in the U.S. aren't really readily available. Most of the Eucerin products are like hand products or the lip products or mo body moisturizers here. So I'm really excited. So I picked up a few I picked up a uh, pigment serum, which I'm really enjoying. If I buffer it with good hydrating products, it works well. I picked up a vitamin C thing that they have, and I'm just starting to try that one out. Do you guys hear that? I hear Ike. He's howling. He oh, okay. Ike's howling. Sorry, I got a little distracted when you hear. Woo, woo, woo. Um, but anyway, so I'm really excited. I'm really enjoying. I've got a night cream from them that I'm enjoying as well. I have a feeling somebody's walking their dog by, and Ike is probably standing like right here. Now Ike's in the house. Jeez. I think someone's dog ran into our yard, and I could hear a lady. Sorry, got a little distracted there when you hear your dog barking. Anyway, okay, so back to that. I just, I can hear him now. Oh, that's Lincoln. Ah, craziness. Okay, so I'm really enjoying the user and stuff. Loving it. 
having fun with it. Haven't had to use any of it long enough to review it yet, but I will. So, sorry, my reaction was like, I just hear the dog barking, and I hear another dog barking, and I hear a lady, like, yelling at her dog, and it's like, what the heck's going on out there? It's just chaos. So, anyway, Ike had his fence collar on. Although, Ike last night tried to jump the fence in the middle of the night. He was trying to, I think there was a deer in the backyard or something. So, everything fine? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We're making friends with all the neighbors. <laughs> I'm so sick of everybody being home. Yeah, you know, everyone's home. They're always walking their dog up and down. Lincoln just stares on the top of the couch out the window, and anytime anybody walks by, they both start freaking out like it's Christmas and they're getting bones or something. So, anyway, okay, so sorry about that. Anytime I hear Ike, you just never know what the heck he's doing. So He was trying to go over the fence. Thankfully, he had his collar on. I think he's going to yep. have to wear his fence collar all the time. But right, he was trying to get over right there. And oh, right where the fence kind of goes where, where the back. The fence isn't. So I've got a physical fence in my yard and an electric fence for the dogs. The physical fence is like six feet tall. No. Four feet tall? Four feet tall. I can figure out how to jump over it. Lincoln's jumped over it. Lincoln tried to jump off the deck to get over the fence. So it's cr sometimes they've even escaped, even with a physical fence and a wire. And thankfully, we're on a large land area. And actually, we have a couple cameras. So one time, Ike had jumped over the fence, and then my blink camera thing went off. And I look in the camera, and there's Ike walking in the, in the front of the driveway. Hi, Lincoln. So anyway, we've got a camera, a physical fence, an electric fence, and it's craziness. And you know what? We're pretty. We have a pretty far yard, but everyone around here has dogs, and some of the dogs aren't very well trained, and some of them are run. Like our neighbor has a big white dog. Well, she was walking her dog off uh, without a leash. Why would you walk your dog? I don't know. I guess they feel like they're in the country. And that little dog ran up to the fence <sighs> as Ike was sitting there barking. It's kind of not Ike's fault. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a big fan of leashes. If you have a dog, just keep them on a leash. Unless you're like in the middle of nowhere, you just. You don't know what's out there. So, anyway. That's about it. Okay, I'm done. Done with the dog stuff. Sorry. <laughs> guard dog. He is a guard dog. And you know what? There was one time I was coming up the stairs. And it was dark out. And he didn't know who I was. And he just started howling at me. I'm like, it was kind of funny. I mean, he won't bite. He'll never bite anyone. But he is intimidating. He intimidates me. So, okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. User and pigment control SPF is the nicest. I'm going to have to check. Yo, I think I got that one, actually, from Look Fantastic. That was the other thing from User I got was a sunscreen. Now I remember that. I've got four new User and products, a night cream, a pigment cream, a sunscreen, and a vitamin C thing. So I'm trying a couple of them, so I'll get to review them. Oh, by the way, somebody commented the fragrance-free essence is the peach and lily uh, wild dew essence. The Peach and Lily Glass Skin Serum is on sale at Ulta today for $19.50. So if you want to try it, check it out. It might be U.S. or U.S. and Canada only. So, okay. So I thought I should mention that. Let's see. Is it safe for me to use Retin-A at night and different in the morning? That might be a bit much. Although I personally find different to be rather gentle because... Some people have really had really issues with it. I think if you used a retinol before and start using different, it can be gentle. If it's your first retinoid type product ever, maybe those are the people that find it to be a little bit difficult. I probably wouldn't do that. That might just be a bit much. I guess it might also depend on the strength of them. But you might be able to try. Has anybody used? I've used retin-A a little bit, and I find it to be very drying. Although I've used the different and not had any issues. So it might work, but it might be a bit too much. Has anybody used a lot of Retin-A or different that can compare them a bit better? Because my experience with Retin-A was just, it was so dry. And I, I still have a tube of it, and I just haven't used it because my skin prefers the different. I, I used that in high school. Different? No. Or Retin-A? Yeah. Did you find it to be very drying? Yeah, because my face is all pimply. Ah. I'm breaking off from the glossier future dew, and I'm trying to get it under control. Retin at night and different in the morning. Um, have you used both the retin and different? I you might try it once. The future dew, 
I think some of the oils in there can kind of backfire on people. And it's got the mica in there. So definitely don't use the Future Dew at night. More so just in the morning. But it, you might try it, I guess, and just see. As long as you've been able to use both of those separately and not had any issues, then that's probably where I would go with that. If you can use both of them once a day for like 30 days, then it might be worth trying. Or... Instead, at, at night, just use a good BHA instead. A good salicylic acid serum, that might be the way to go. i probably use the Retin-A at daytime and a good salicylic in the evening. That's probably where I'd start. So, you just never know. Some people tolerate things very well, and some people have been using the Retin-A for four years. So, that's a long enough time. Might try it. Or if you don't use a good salicylic acid at night, try that. So, yeah, the future do can be a bit, you know, I'm a week, you know, so you've been using it for a week and you have a breakout from it. Normally, I'd say it could just be a purge from something in there or your skin could be irritated from something in it. You really can't tell until a month in, which is a long time because the skin's skin cycle is a month, 30 days between the shedding and things. So normally if people have a purge, they say to wait 30 days before you change anything. So it could go away in a month or it could just be something in the serum that your skin doesn't like at all. So I guess if you want to wait 30 days and keep using it, it's there's really no good answer to it. It's kind of a bummer. So let's see. Okay. Oh, Dubai. We've got someone from Dubai. That's a place I've always wanted to go, and it's probably not going to happen for a long time. How are you guys? Are you guys safe in Dubai? I don't hear much about Dubai. Hopefully you guys are safe there. Pennsylvania. Let's see. Paula's choice seems to be take typical silicone, glycerin, and glycol base. Add a few extracts and charge a ton of money. That's about it. Because this one, when I looked, it wasn't surprising. The first bit, water, glycerin, butylene, glycol, acetyl alcohol, and then you got the other stuff. You're right. This is not bad. I could probably formulate a product around that. Maybe I should do that. So, let's see. Okay, sorry, I got, I got distracted when I heard Ike going nuts. He's a good guard dog, though. Let's see. Do I ever wash my face in the middle of the day so I can play with more products all the time? Especially now that I'm home all day. I know it's out of control. Even sometimes I, before this all happened, I would do it. Like I would exercise, I'd get home and wash my face, then start all over again. Probably not the best for your skin, but sometimes kind of fun. Especially when you have just nothing but time. So, let's see. Okay. You break out on the side you sleep on. Any suggestions? You know what? Probably. The only thing I can think of would be to change your pillowcase like every other night. That's probably one of the big issues. And then anytime where it's dark, bacteria gets in and you can have problems. What about his detergent? Your laundry detergent could also. That's a good thought, cameraman. <laughs> You're getting into this. It could be a detergent thing, too. I always, yeah, I always use a fragrance-free detergent because my skin is so ridiculously sensitive. So that might be something worth trying too. Fragrance-free, uh, if you can get it now. It seems like everything is sold out everywhere right now. Of everything. So let's see. Paula's Choice Calm Relief Repairing Serum is a good one. That's what I finally used on my neck today, and it really did help. The Paula's Choice Calming Repair Serum. Because I tried so many different products. And between that and the Lord Jones, that, that helped. So I don't know why. Maybe the CBD really does have something to it. Who knows? It's possible. So, Oh, Eucerin shampoo is really nice. I'm going to have to check that one out too. Now that I, now that I can smuggle in Eucerin. Probably pretty crazy, isn't it? Let's see. So, let's see. I've got one other thing to talk about, but uh, I can just keep answering questions. And I can always talk about this later, so let's see. So we've got 
Mad Hippie Exfoliation Serum, sim similar to Drunk Elephant. Huh, the Mad Hippie Exfoliating Serum. That one I found, it has a little bit of fragrance in it, and my skin didn't love that one. Mad Hippie, it seems to be so hit or miss for me. Like, one product will be great, the next one my skin will hate. The next one will be great. Just on and on and on. I don't know what the rhyme or reason is. Like, last, a couple months ago, they came out with two new products. One was an oil-based cleanser, and the other one is an exfoliating cleanser. I hated the oil-based cleanser, but the exfoliating powders worked well. That's just the way it is for that brand with me. Every other product is a great one. The other one's just the worst. I don't know why either. Their cream cleanser is great, so... Are you laughing at Mad Hippie? No. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if Mad Hippie was a source of... Let's see. Fra Ann says, fragrance is non-beneficial for skin and can cause a lot of problems. Yes. Yeah, you know what? Fragrance does nothing good for your skin. At all. There's just nothing. Okay, so a new product that came out recently, actually just brand new, was the Then I Met You, they've got a new moisturizer, which I was super excited about. And the packaging's cute, but it was ridiculously expensive. Although this is 1.7 ounces. How can that be the same amount of product? Isn't that kind of crazy? Anyway, it is. So I got it, I was all excited, no fragrance, super calming tide gel cream. So I get it today and I look at the ingredients and water, butylene glycol, glycerin, niacinamide, yay, we love niacinamide. We've got hibiscus, we've got a few peptides, I'm excited, I'm excited. Uh, adenosine, betaine, and at the very end, bergamot oil. I'm like, are you serious? I was all excited. I was reading it, calming. Yes, I need calm. Looks good, looks good. Nice cinnamide. Woohoo, I'm excited. And then we get to the end and it's like bergamot. And so now it's like, I'm so bummed. So I haven't even used it yet. I'll see how much it smells. The scent is really not noticeable. So why do they even include it? It's a little bit noticeable. It's got a bit of a fruity scent. But why? Why would they do that? They've got a good product. It's cutely packaged. They're going to sell millions of them for a ridiculous amount of money. And they go and add bergamot oil. What the heck? So I was just so bummed. So that's one of the new products I was going to talk about. But I haven't really tried it other than that. Because once I saw bergamot oil, I'm just like, I know it's a potential hazard. It's got so many good things going for it, but they went and ruined it. So anyway, let's see. Niacin was good. Yeah, niacin vitamin B3 is good. Ni I would take, you know, I take a multivitamin every day. I actually started, I changed my multivitamin to Occuvite for your eyes because my eyes are always super dry since LASIK. Although I'm glad I did LASIK. But a good vitamin, a good multivitamin is always good. Half the beauty supplements that are sold are either useless or you can find them in a multivitamin for one-tenth of the cost. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. So... Yes, Matthew, bergamot oil. The scent is lingering, even though it's the last ingredient. So I think that's $40. It's a bummer. That's going to be my other birthday present. So have you tried any of the doll face products? I have not. I'm going to have to add that to my list. Doll face. You know what? There's so many brands out there. It's just crazy. And so I'm finally starting to try some of the 4th Ray Beauty products, which I should have been trying a long time ago. And those are super hit or miss, too. So there's so many little brands. Q&A is a new one, which I'm just trying out now lately. And they're super hit or miss. They seem to have pepper and oil and a lot of stuff. What else is new? Oh, um, Wish Trend came out with a new Essence, which I'm not a fan of the clear bottle. But so far, I like the Essence. I'm trying to remember if it had any fragrance in it. But it's got a little bit of, let's see, it's got a little bit of propolis. So, willow bark. I don't know if willow bark's the best thing, but anyway, I was excited by the propolis, even though it's 1%. It's kind of sad. And then another new product that came out that I was super excited about. This is my other birthday present because I got it on sale for like 30% off. I really celebrate my birthday, don't I? I'm all about that. You know what? I didn't do anything for my birthday. It was so depressing because of all the things starting. 
So I really went off the deep end. But you know what? I've been saving so much money. TJ Maxx is closed. I can't walk into a Sephora and randomly buy $100 worth of makeup that I don't need. I don't go out to eat anymore. I don't have my coffee. I don't have my ice cream. I'm saving my gym membership. I save that. That's like $20. But anyway, so my birthday went crazy. But the Peter Collagen Firmex Collagen Serum, this one is so silicone-y. I'm going to review it uh, in the next few days. It is just so silicone-y. It's, I don't know. I mean, you, your skin really can't absorb collagen anyway. So look, I mean, it just looks like a big splotch of silicone. And that's what it feels. And it's super just congested to my skin. So I tried that one. What else did I try? One more other thing. This one was on uh, Yes Style, I think, for like $7 because it was on sale. So I was really excited because it's like a Epidermal Growth Factor Essence Peel. But this one's super fragrant as well. So I'm kind of bummed about that. What else? Do, oh, there's one other brand that everyone had been asking me to try a while ago, and I hadn't tried it, but then they were on sale. Sioris? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Bring the Light Serum. Then we've got the My Soft Grain Scrub and a Calming Day Ampule, which several people asked me to review, so I finally saw it all on sale, and I picked it up. And I will say these boxes are so tiny that I thought with the prices, how the, it was kind of expensive. I thought the box was going to be like double the size, but I guess, what do you expect? I don't know. An ampule, one ounce. It just seemed like it was going to be so much bigger to me in my head, and then I got it, and I haven't tried them yet, so I'll definitely do that. But anyway, oh, did you know you need about $50,000 to start your own skincare brand? You know, it's, it, the, from the way I look at that, that's interesting. I'm like, 50000 that's a lot of money to start a brand. But then if you think about it, like fifty grand to start Shiseido, that's like a bargain. It's in, You know, it's kind of a, I guess it just depends on what side of the uh, bank account you're looking at it from. I guess, how long would that take? How much would you have to sell to make that back? Probably, you know, there's probably a lot of brands that start and just go out fast. Don't, don't do math live. Don't do math live? Okay. I try not to ever do math, so. One other interesting, oh. Oh, I'm I like so. Thank you, Matthew. That's awesome. I like it. I'm trying to keep everyone entertained. But if you guys get sick of me, just let me know. Because since I have like all day to either make food, play with my dogs, or just be obsessive about skincare and beauty, I could make like a bazillion reviews, but I don't want everyone to get sick of me. But I do want to entertain everybody, so it's kind of a, there's a fine line between having enough of me out there and making everyone annoyed. So I'm trying to stay in the middle. Sometimes I go a little crazy. So let's see. Image skincare. I'm going to have to add that to my list. You know what? I like this because I get lots of good ideas of stuff to try. I'm going to have to check that out. That'll be my next birthday present. I'm sure you spent more than 50 grand on skincare. Don't say that in front of the cameraman. Ever. He doesn't know anything. That's a low Ever. Number. Oh, don't even. I can't even think about it. You know, I'd like to say we could have saved all that money and, like, gone on a trip with it, but we couldn't because the thing is out there and everything's going to. Then everything's just crazy right yeah, now. We could so. have had more toilet paper. We could have had more toilet paper. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. You're too sweet. Thank you. That's too sweet. I'll use that for a treat tonight. Apple Zero pie. Seconds, yeah. I'm. Nobody can get sick of me. I like that. That means I should be like videotaping everything. And then I'll turn into the Tiger King, except it'll be like the Beauty Queen or something. I don't know. The Beauty King. I don't know. Oh, I like you guys. You guys are so sweet. I just love it. Let's see. What are my favorite Good Molecules products? Good Molecules, they're niacinamide toner. Love it. It's the best toner. I love it. I finally finished it, and I didn't even realize it, so I have to go buy a new one there. That Their new pineapple powder is really nice, too. Their niacinamide serum is pretty good, although I think for niacinamide serum that the uh, ordinary one is just a little bit different, a little bit more fragrance-free. But they're, they're, uh, the toner is great. The pineapple part is great. Their discoloration serum I'm working on reviewing right now, so that one's worth checking out. 
and I'm trying to think their peptide serum was okay but the toner and the powder are great those are the two I'd recommend right now and I think Beautylish you need $35 to get free shipping I think with both of those you'll be right about there but if not add the discoloration serum because that one's a good one so let's see Ultraceutical skin sunscreen. I haven't tried ultra. I'm gonna have to check that out. Ultraceuticals. I'm always about Australia. I love Australia. Australian sunscreen. It can't be bad. They have so much sun there. So, can I use retinol and BHA at the same time? I would probably try and either alternate nights with the retinol and BHA. Or use one maybe in the morning, but preferably I would alternate nights, especially if you're new to either one of them. And certainly use a sunscreen in the daytime. Absolutely. So alternate nights. Sometimes it's just better, especially if you have more sensitive skin. I've kind of worked up to where I can use like different and a BHA in the same routine, but sometimes it can be too much and you don't want to overdo it. So oh, if Lab Muffin uses their sunscreens, they have to be good, I think. She's so, I love her website, so. Okay, one other thing, Fenty Beauty. This is interesting, because it's not the best timing. Fenty Beauty is going to be launching skincare. I am very interested to see what happens with it, because it seems like most makeup brands, when they transition into skincare, they don't do a very good job with it, or they end up adding fragrance, because they don't know what else to do. So Huda Beauty just launched her skincare line and her first product was not very exciting. Lots of fragrance. It was going to be for sensitive skin and it really isn't. Tarte has done a pretty good job with their skincare for the most part. Tarte skincare is good. They don't have some of their cleansers and exfoliants aren't the best, but their vitamin C is great. Their moisturizer are great. Their serums are pretty good. So it's going to be interesting to see. All these makeup brands want to do skincare. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's just that makeup isn't enough revenue or that they see skincare as the next big thing or it's just the natural transition. I don't know. So I'm going to be interested to see audience, see what they're bigger at. Yeah, bigger at more money, I guess. So, man, yeah, guarantee fragrance has Fenty fragrance in their skincare. I'm sure it's going to. So you'll be interesting. So they... They've patented some things, and it covers medicated and non-medicated skin care, soap, body care, personal care products, perfume, and other fragrance-only products. So does that mean perfumes, or does that mean they're going to be fragrance and everything? I'm not sure. So that'll be interesting. So it's a whole article about Fenty. And they've done a really good job. I'm not exactly sure how much formulation Rihanna's done with it, but... Uh, Anyway, and then in this next little thing at the end of it, has makeup lost its gloss? According to market research company, luxury makeup sales have dropped 8% in 2019. And that was really before the thing started. 8% is a huge drop. It says analysis note that beauty consumers are increasingly turning away from heavy contoured looks and seek a dewy complexion via skincare. A growing number of luxury color cosmetic brands have recently ventured into skincare, including Huda Beauty, Marc Jacobs, and Victoria Beckham. Marc Jacobs also had a lot of fragrance. I've not tried anything with Victoria Beckham's name on it, although her husband has this whole skincare brand, so that's always interesting. Maybe you should try it. You don't use the Clinique stuff I throw in your drawer, so maybe I'll have to try that. Does ivory soap make it? Does ivory soap count? Ivory soap is just... Ah. Uh, does it float? Or that's ivory? <laughs> There's one of them that would float in the bathtub. That must have been ivory. I haven't taken a bath since I was a kid. <laughs> Baths are nice. Let's see. Okay. Fragrance. Alcohol. Denatured it. Alcohol. Stop the insanity. I love it. We need like a lobbyist group or something. Yeah, you know what? Sensitive skin formulations is mostly marketing. That is so true because all of this stuff is supposed to be for sensitive skin, skin calming. It's not going to be calming when it has a set essential oil in it. So, Oh, do I wear perfume? I don't really because, you know what? The only type of perfume I'll wear is something that's very light vanilla. 
because so much of it gives me he headaches. <clears throat> and like, wherever I go, if someone wears, like, there's at the gym, there's this one gal, she's always wearing a pink shirt and gray sweatpants. She is covered in perfume. She's covered in it. And whenever she comes and sits at a treadmill anywhere near me, I have to go down to the last one. I know it's rude, but I can't. She's just out of control. So I, if it's something with a really light vanilla scent, I can wear it no problem. Anything else, I just can't. So it's kind of a bummer. Oh, this is an interesting question. Does perfume on your neck age you faster because of the alcohol? Probably does. I never thought of that, but yeah. I'm sure it does. I mean, it's just denatured alcohol and irritants, so it can't be good. Oh, there we go. Yes, it ages and discolors the skin when exposed to UV light. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would spray it on your clothes. There's, like, some perfumes for your hair. Or I'll just apply a little bit on my sh sweatshirt if I do, but I pretty much smell like nothing, I think. Nothing I use has any scent to it. What What did I just use recently that was so scented? Huh. I'll have to remember. There's something I used recently that was so scented, it like made me gag, and I can't remember what it was. I'm sure it just went back somewhere where I didn't want to see it again. I'll have to remember that. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about quick was Clinique came out with their Super City Block. So they've got already got the City Block, which I think their original one comes in a green tube. They just came out with this one which is a little bit of an upgrade because I think the first one was SPF 45 and SPF 30. So this one's SPF 50. And I picked this one up because it was on sale and it was my birthday month. <laughs> and I was so disappointed because this stuff is so chalky. It is just like, you know what? It's just so full of, I don't know. It just doesn't blend well. If you apply it over anything, it is just atrocious. I'm going to continue to play with it, but... I am just bummed because I love the original City Block. It was really nice. And this one is just gross. So I'm going to keep playing with it, though. That doesn't mean it sucks. It just means my first reaction to it wasn't exciting. Especially when I've been using some really nice sunscreens lately. So I think my expectations were more built up. And then you got to remember it's an American sunscreen and we don't have access to good stuff. So anyway. Oh, one other thing that came out. These are the last things for my birthday. And then uh, Rovectin came out with this clean LHA blemish ampule, which I was really excited about. And then I looked, and there was some fragrance in here, I thought. Let's see. Bitter orange flower water. So I was super excited, but I'll try it because I have to. But not excited to see bitter orange flower while I was the first ingredient. And then this one finally went on clearance somewhere. And I was excited, but I couldn't find the ingredient list for this one anywhere online. And so I just buy it taking a leap of faith. It's a Neogen brand, Cermetic. They kind of know what they're doing. And then I look at the ingredients, and this one's just full of bergamot oil, lavender oil, citrus oil, orange peel oil, rosewood oil, rosemary oil, eucalyptus oil. I mean, those are all at the beginning. And then the peptides from this one, literally the last ingredients. How do you market something as a peptide lifting serum when the peptides are the very last ingredient? It's so annoying. That is the most annoying thing. You know what? They should have named it, they should have named it like orange oil serum or something. Anything but peptides because that's the last thing in it. So, it's so annoying. Anyway, those are my big annoyances. Yes, I will never use a U.S. sunscreen on my face. Yes, their UVA protection is horrible. And I was actually thinking about starting like a lobbying group, right, to like lobby. This was before the thing started. Nobody cares about sunscreen now. But I was thinking about this like a few months ago. I'm like, I should start a lobbying group to lobby the U.S. to create more sunscreen filters. And I did a little bit of research, and there was a bill that passed in 2000. 16 i think in the u.s that stated the fda will have to research new sunscreen filters and nothing has happened they passed a law nothing's happened with it we're never going to see good filters here so just buy them wherever you can anywhere but the u.s base there are a few good ones but most of the really good ones 
or European or anywhere but here, really. So that's my rant for the day. Let's see. Let's see. Would you ever consider using drunk elephant body products on the face? You know what? Somebody did that. A YouTuber just did that recently. They're using them all over their face, and they seem to enjoy it. So there's really nothing in there to me that looks like it's body only. Maybe just the texture and stuff, but it'll be much more affordable. So let's see. Let's see. Oh, Audrey's going to start celebrating her birthday. Go for it. Just don't buy this, 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 uh, this, this. Wait, all my birthday presents suck. I think I need another birthday. Seriously, I'm so bummed. And all the drunk elephant stuff was a bummer too, which I might actually return. So let's see. Lab Muffin said they are not making any more UV filters because of the animal testing ban. Wayne Goss, there we go. Yeah, and you know what? The animal t it's interesting. There's a very fine line. I mean, research needs to be done, but we don't really need research on like a new moisturizer. This doesn't need research, really. But sunscreen is something that does need real research, so... I don't know. There's a fine line. And, you know, it's not, as, as much as you can use people in it, that's I'm for that. As long as it doesn't injure them. I was reading when this thing started, there was an article about polio. When they first had the polio vaccine that came out, they tested that fake vaccines on people and the real vaccines on real people, which I found to be fascinating. Because, I mean... Just test as much as you can on people, but some of that stuff is a little crazy, so you're telling people they might have a vaccine to polio, or they might not. That's a little frightening. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if we get a vaccine for this thing. Hopefully we do very soon, because I think just the longer this goes on, it's just not going to be good. Or the, that, or everyone, every single person needs to wear a mask. I don't know. There's just There's just nothing necessarily great about anything, so... Oh, April 15th. That's tax day in the U.S. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. So you get a real birthday if you're in the U.S. now. Let's see. Oh, my Amazon account won't open from iOS. Let's see. We'll have to look at that. What's that? Grant said our Amazon account link won't open from iOS. Oh. I'll check into that for you. I think I have a video of myself transferring the cr cream. But I'll double check on that, too. I'm pretty sure I did that. Although sometimes, I do so many videos, sometimes I totally forget. So, oh, probably won't have a vaccine for another 18 months. Yeah, I, you know what? Everyone's really hoping for this new one that they're looking at. But you just, science doesn't work that fast. Especially for as fast as this thing came on. So, just be safe, everyone, because... The less people that get it, the better, especially the fact of transferring it or older people getting it or little, even little kids are getting it, which they first thought that was not going to happen. So let's see. Uh, can this live stream be seen later? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We put, we'll put it up. So, although I won't because I don't know much about that, but the cameraman knows all of that stuff. Uh, do you believe that silicones are acneogenic? You know, I think it's just different for some people. There's a lot of people that can use dimethicone with no issues. There's some people that say it clogs their pores. It's just super individual. You really don't know until you try it. So it's totally, everything is super. I mean, you could have, you could have this product and you could have 90 out of 100 people say it works great and one person will be react to something in it. So everything is super individual. So... Oh, Grant works in a hospital. Thank you for working in a hospital. That's a frightening place right now. It'll be a good year where, or so till we have a vaccine. Where are you from, Grant? Is it rude of me to ask your age? No, you know what? That's why my birthday was even more special this year, because I turned 40. They asked the, the date, too. The date? March 10th. March 10th, 1980. So I turned 40. And it was a bummer. It's such a bummer. Anyway... It was like supposed to be a great thing and really party and 
It was nothing. I stayed at home. That's that's why I spent even more. So anyway, you gotta celebrate something though. So thank you. Do I look forty, or how old do I look? Maybe I look like twenty. That was twenty like before, but not using sunscreen until I was like thirty-five. So oh, you linked to it. Okay, that was good. Does it work? Works on look at those. look at that Clinique sunscreen. It's still all damp. It is just a not a good sunscreen. Sorry, that's like my. Let's see, K Beauty Vitamin C recommendation. Purito. I love their vitamin C. Or a lighter vitamin C is the Isn't Tree C Niacin Toning Ampule. If you want a stronger vitamin C, I'd go with Purito. A little bit lighter is the Isn't Tree C Niacin. Tony Napiel. I love both of those. Oh, Detroit. Wow. That's amazing. I It's frightening for people that are in the healthcare industry. Hopefully you guys are getting enough equipment that you desperately need. I know I've got a couple friends right now that are sewing masks from home. I wish I had a sewing machine. Maybe I could. she could teach me or something. But anyway. Wow. A good one-step cleanser. I'm trying to think of it. The Peach and Lily. What is it? Their Calming Cream Cleanser, I think, is the name of it. The Peach and Lily Cleanser is a good one. Does a very good job. Another good one-step cleanser. I'm trying to think. I like the uh, By Wish Trend Hibiscus Cleanser. It comes in a pink bottle. That one does a great job with makeup. And you're good. And then the Paula's Choice uh, comes in a pink bottle. The Paula's Choice Cleanser, Defense, Defense Cleanser. Those are three ones that do a great job. They remove makeup, sunscreen, and you're good. You really don't need any steps with it. So those are three of my favorites. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I love. Um, Hand Skin just came out with a bubble, bubble Pop Cleanser, which is like a foam cleanser. It's really nice, too, and that one does a good job. So either four of those are awesome one-step cleansers. They all do a great job removing everything. And that's that's not the easiest because it's hard to do a good job but still not leave skin feeling dry. So Peach and Lily Hydrating Gel Cleanser. That's it. <laughs> Girl, take all those dead products back. You know, I mostly hand them down. I wish I need to research this and find a uh, charity I would take open things, which I I get that most of them wouldn't, but if they know it's coming from somebody that's not tampering with them, or just slightly used, like something like this, anyway, I'll work on that one too. So, got Australia in the house. Woohoo! Curel is a good one step cleanser. That's a good one. I just tried that one too. So, let's see. Is Skin SkinCeutical CE Ferulic cosmetically elegant and does it oxidize fast? It does because it's in a dropper bottle. They really should repackage that. If you don't mind spending a little bit of money for a good vitamin C serum, the one I really like is the Allies of Skin uh, Vitamin C Collagen Reboosting Serum, I think is the name of it. That one's a good one. Um, to be honest, if SkinCeuticals is something you like or might want to try, the Dr. Brenner Vitamin C Serum is 99% identical to it. The only thing that makes it a little bit different is it has a little bit more vitamin C. So the Dr. Brenner one is one I just finally tried recently, and I love it. You couldn't tell the difference between that and the SkinCeuticals one. They're almost totally identical. So I really like that one. And that one, the Dr. Brenner seems to be a little work a little bit better. It's a little bit stronger, but otherwise all the ingredients are the same. And it's uh, $140 less. So if you're thinking about trying SkinCeuticals, I urge you to try Dr. Brenner first. Save the $140 and just see if the Dr. Brenner works for you. Because at least then if there's something you don't like about that one, you probably won't like the SkinCeuticals one either. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Does the SkinCeuticals last at least three months? You know what? It oxidizes the very first time you open it. So each time you use it, it successfully gets more degraded so I would say you can probably use it without any issues for two months but after that it kind of starts to degrade 
So try the Dr. Brenner if you can where you're located first. That one's a good one. I like that one. The other one is Timeless. They have a great one too. They're pretty similar to SkinCeuticals as well. So, yeah. Oh, you have Timeless. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you like the Timeless. I would still try Dr. Brenner. It's better than SkinCeuticals because it's a little bit stronger. And if you've already been using a vitamin C serum, your skin might appreciate the little bit of extra oomph that the Dr. Brenner gives. So, do that and then spend the extra money on Proteiny. That's what I would say. That's what I would do. So, let's see. That's kind of my thoughts. If I had to pick one between, if somebody was offering them both to me for free, I would pick the Dr. Brenner. I like that one better. I swear to God, I, I'm a big fan of it. Although I've got a few new vitamin C products I've got to review now too, but the Dr. Brenner one, I, I wish I would have tried it sooner because I really do like that one. So... Let's see. First Aid Beauty Pure Skin Face Cleanser. I love that one. The First Aid Beauty Pure Skin... I, you know what? I don't think I reviewed it, but I need to. Thoughts on Dermalogica. So I get excited every time I see a new Dermalogica product come up. And there was a new one that came on, I think it was Nordstrom today. I'm trying to remember what it was. Anyway, it was a new Dermalogica product, so I was excited, so I opened it up. They had the ingredients list there, and I'm like, oh, good, good, great, looks good, this is great. And then I get to the last few lines, and it's just fragrance, fragrance, fragrance. It was like a calming serum, I think. So, yeah, there's a few Dermalogic products that are fine. Their cleansers are good, typically. Their sunscreens can be really nice, but most everything else has too much fragrance for me. So, every time I try it, I kind of get let down. It's kind of... Yeah, so I was looking at that. I just hate that when that happens, though. Great ingredients. This is exciting. This might be a Dermalogica product I can finally use. And I get down there, the last few things are fragrance. Geronol, linalool, lemonine. And I'm like, can't do it, especially for how much they charge. So, Oh, off topic, have I ever tried the baby foot peel? You know what? I've been going to I'm gonna use it, I think, in the next week. But I have used it, and it does a very nice job for the most part. It's weird, though. But... You'll love it if you use it. It really does make your skin nice, your feet nice and soft. So, yeah. Yeah, Dermacologica is heavily fragranced. Yeah, though the silicone feeling is nice. Yeah, I agree with that. And for what they charge, they just should have some better stuff. So, anyway. Hey, sir, we, we gotta go soon because of uh, Oh, we've got a food order. order. Oh, oh my family. gosh. We've got a food order coming. I'm so excited. So crazy times when you're excited to get like lettuce and tomato and stuff. I'm so, I hope it's still in stock by the time the delivery comes because you never know. But anyway, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. But thank you guys. Thank you, Matt and Grant. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. I know everyone's totally tightening their uh, wallets right now and somewhat sometimes in the end i think it'll be okay but we just got to get through this until there's some better things so thank you guys so much so so thank you guys and i'll do another one of these uh in the next i'll keep you guys posted in the next few days although my neck looks so much better than it did earlier so anyway thank you guys so much and uh, i'll keep you posted but i appreciate it matt grant thank you and I will see you guys again very soon. So thank you.